Christian, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming, an absolute pleasure to meet you virtually. How are you? Okay? Man, if I was any better, I couldn't live with myself right now. It's nice to meet you, Sarah. Thank you for having me so much. Oh, yeah, it's so nice to chat to you. Um, so obviously this series, you know, has been made and been out in the US for, for some time now, but obviously here in the UK, um, people are going to be coming to this fresh. So for the uninitiated, can you just give us an intro to Almost Paradise? What can they expect from this series? I sure can. Uh, this is a this is an idea of Dean Devlin, my boss, uh, my boss on the show, executive producer, creator of this with Gary Rosen, came up with a few years ago, and I was too young to play it. They kind of had it in their mind, and uh, and they, they he really thought Hawaii was the place for it, and then it just dawned on him. He's uh, he's uh, he's Filipino himself, and he said, "Let's do it in the Philippines." And um, and so it's a, it's an ex DEA agent. Um, he he was the best in his in his field. And because of the of the overexertion he put himself through and really taking everything so seriously, he's developed a heart problem. He's developed, you know, he's he's uh, he's got he's it's just not good. They had to retire him. You know, he may have lost his family over the whole thing. He was a hard worker. So he goes to the Philippines to retire. He found this little place uh, that he really enjoyed that nothing, you know, it was just a little quaint thing on the beach. And it was great. And he shows up trying to get rid of stress and realizes all these hotels have come around that there's so many people there. And uh, in the attempt of him trying to find peace, he breaks up a sting in the middle of it and they bring him back in, you know what I mean? It's one of those uh, Pacino moments where they, they brought him back in and he starts uh, doing some stuff with the, uh, with the local police there. And it's just a, a, a carnival of mishaps and the guy just can't win. Even though he's trying to be peaceful, he's, he's drugged back into the way, no pun intended, that he uh, that he started and then the way he finished. And it looks like it must have been so much fun to shoot and kind of taps into your own skills, I believe it's like, you know, martial arts and, and doing stunts. There's also a lot of humor, you know, on top of the action and you got to be in the Philippines. So maybe it felt like a no brainer, but maybe you can take your mind back. What was the initial appeal for you? The initial appeal for me was the fact that A, I get to work with Dean Depp you know, who I've worked with on, on leverage, on the librarians, you know what I mean? It's my boss and we know each other. He's, he's still my boss, <clears throat> but I feel like we've become friends and he knows me and he really knows how to write for me. And then he said it was going to be in the Philippines. And it was really kind of a great thing because most of the people, and I'm going to be honest with you, most of the people use the Philippines as poverty porn. You know what I mean? Nobody shows the really great stuff. It's always the bad guys came from the Philippines or they end up in the Philippines and they show really bad. We wanted to celebrate it. We wanted to show the unbelievable vibrant colors of not only the land, the surroundings, but the people in general. Unbelievable actors there. They're getting a chance to come in and, uh, and work on the, the first American TV show that was ever filmed there. And, uh, and so it was, it was it, as you said, it was a no brainer for me, but it was also very exciting. I was just like, I get to build a new character around a new circumstance. And then we filled the cast up. I, I flew out to, to, to Manila with Dean just for two days. And then we flew back and came back. And when I got to meet the likes of Sam Rochelle, Art Acuna, uh, Noni, you know, all these people. And I was like, we've, we've, I, I get to surround myself. I kind of feel like Seinfeld, you know what I mean? I've surrounded myself with some really unbelievable actors um, and we just get to play. And it was, um, it was, uh, it was something that, that you dream of, you know, coming from, coming from where I came from. This is one of the roles I came to Hollywood to play and I'm getting to play it. So, uh, yeah, they didn't, they didn't twist my arm at all. <laughs> and, you know, what were some of the highlights of filming in that location? And was there, you know, a bit of a, a learning curve? Because was like you say, the first American production to, to be filming there. And do you think that uh, the fact that, there, you know, there are more and more shows, I think, I've uh, recently covered Pachinko, which was like a, a, an international production, you know, with, with Korea. So uh, it feels like these are things are happening more often and there's more of an appetite now to explore different parts of the world on screen and not in a way, like you say, that's just sort of boxed in and stereotypical. Yeah. Well, one of the reasons why we absolutely, we absolutely loved filming there was uh, just the, the, the people in general. 
they're, they're very, they, they, they're hard workers. They're some of the nicest people I've ever met. There was a little bit of a learning curve because we come in as this bulldozer of American TV. And especially we, you know, Mark Roskin directed the first episode, executive producer, Dean Devlin involved, Gary Rosen. We've all done it. You know I mean? We, we shoot 12 hours of TV so fast because we, we know each other. We, you know, it's back of hand for us. And then you come into this situation to where the Filipino people film way differently than we do. So it was like two trains colliding. And, um, and in a matter of, I think maybe two weeks, maybe three weeks, we had built it up. We, they were doing stuff that we do. We accepted some of the stuff that they do. And it just became a really great team. And by episode, I think three, it was, it was really, it just, it just flowed so well. And, and, I, and I think that maybe, I think maybe some of these people have seen the show and started thinking, wow, we, can, we actually don't have to, to use a foreign country as the bad place where everybody, you know what I mean? You can celebrate it because it's really, the Philippines was a back, it was another actor. You know, it, most of the times used as a backdrop. This actually became another actor, all the vibrant colors and everything else. And, and you know, I think people are learning, you can do that in Korea, you can do that in, in, um, in Vietnam, you can do that in uh, Thailand, you know what I mean? And so I think people are starting to take, you know, like kind of watch our lead and realize we we can we can have all these vibrant colors so we don't have to be exactly where we say we are mm. yeah and can you tell us any other sort of highlights and challenges of the shoot you know working with your fellow cast and you know i don't know how it actually works doing all those stunts how much you're doing yourself i don't know there must be times it doesn't all go to plan or maybe you're a master so it's as slick as ever <laughs> well i mean it's i'm actually on the set of leverage right now so that's why i'm kind of dressed in my uh, in my costume here um but um but it's you know i did I've, I've done stunts for a long time even starting from angel all the way through leverage librarians all that kind of stuff i i'm a, I'm a big steve mcqueen fan and I just really love doing stunts. I just do. It's it, there's something. I wake up in the morning. I'm exhilarated that day to go out and do it. And in the Philippines, a little different because you know it's, I'm the lead actor on that instead of you know just a, you know, instead of the main cast. I was the lead on that, and so I really can't get hurt. But we did it anyway. And uh, a couple of times, uh, maybe car driving or something like that, someone would step in. But uh, but other than that, you know, all the fights were were very similar to the ones we do on leverage and it's just an action thing i mean i'm a i'm a bruce lee fan i'm, a, I'm definitely a steve mcqueen fan i'm a tom cruise fan you know and so until they until they say that i can't do it anymore i'm gonna keep running head first into a moving truck <laughs> and how did you see your character of alex walker and i think you know it's what's a nice balance in shows like this is you know, obviously you've got like the action, you've got the comedy, but you you know, you're exploring his backstory, you know, his motivations, why he is where he is, uh, you know, when we're watching him. Um, so, you know, how, how did you see him as a character, as a person? i tell you what was the greatest thing about playing this guy is that, you know, I, years and years of playing Elliot Spencer on Leverage, and I'm still doing it today. This is my look, you know, he's a furrowed brow type of guy. And just to release that, and be able to like start looking at the world as a different character. He's much more emotional. He's much more vulnerable. And I really enjoy playing that. And yes, he still is a tough guy, but he's things get to him more. You know what I mean? And for me to be able to play a character like that while I'm still playing a character like this, it's very refreshing to me. It's really, really refreshing to me. And um, it's, uh, you know, then I surrounded myself with a bunch of people that were very strong actors. And they're this, but they're the nicest people in the world on set. And so we built this camaraderie. And, um, and I remember, I'll tell you a story real quick. I, I, I got up in the morning and it was, uh, it was 6.30. And it was about nine o'clock in the morning. And my call wasn't until um, around noon that day. And Dean was directing, it was the last day of film. And he was supposed to blow up a building at 6.30 in the morning. And he said, I need you to come to set early. So I came to set early and he goes, we're out of here at 12 noon tomorrow. And I was like, man, I haven't even packed. Long story short, we got to the airport, we flew to Manila. As we left, the gates shut behind us. We were the last flight out of the, to the United States before you know, the quarantine hit. And that I remember rapping and I said, hey, and we went and jumped over the hotel bar and got a bottle of Patron tequila. And uh, me and Sam and Art, we all sat there and just high five and talked about the year. And to me, that, that it's, just, it's the camaraderie that we have as a cast that really makes it um, that makes it quite special, and um, and and I enjoy I enjoy playing with those guys. But I think I, I kind of got off a tangent there. But the, the emotional side of this guy is something that I'm new to. 
And, um, and so to be able to play that and to show, to, to open up your chest, I guess is what I'm trying to say and let everybody see what's inside. It's very dangerous to me and it's very scary to me. And that gives me the juice to really want to play this character because it's the uncomfortableness that makes me really want to put that out into the world that I'm glad that it's finally getting out there. And I guess you were also had a role as producer. So were you involved in kind of the casting and, and everything as well? So maybe you can tell, tell us a bit about how you chose who the, the fellow actors were going to be and, 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 and what their characters are like. Yeah, I, I, was, um, I, was, uh, I was involved in the casting up to the point where Dean did something that normally doesn't happen in the Philippines. We auditioned. Usually they, they don't audition in the Philippines, just somebody get, and then not only did we audition, they auditioned with the lead actor. And so that was very, you know, and so a lot of them were very nervous. And I was like, you gotta calm, you know, you have to, you have to calm down. Everything is fine. It's great. You're doing unbelievable. We didn't realize at the time, me nor Dean realized that they don't audition. So it was very scary for them. And, um, and, uh, and I was a part of that, but producing wise, it was just me showing what I've learned over the years being on set and then adapting to what they do and stuff like that. And Dean goes, you've earned it. And he made me a producer. And it was a really nice day for me. I didn't want anybody to know at the time that I was a producer because I wanted them to look at me like I, I wanted to, I wanted us to all be in the trenches because we were and we had a job to do. And I wanted to, everybody else to keep fighting as hard as we fought. And I didn't want them to look at me as someone, you know, I, I wanted I wanted to be a part of them so bad. It was ridiculous because I really respected them and I loved them. And uh, and so I didn't tell anyone. But being a producer on a show like that is uh, was a gift. And Dean gave it to me. And um, I hope I earned it. And, um, you know, obviously, because you are yet to see the reaction here, but obviously when it launched, you know, we were straight into lockdown. So you weren't able to do all the press round that you would have normally been doing, I guess, you know, especially in the US, such a huge country going, you know, from state to state doing shows and things like that. But, you know, it was such a word of mouth hit. So, you know, what was so great about that? And I believe, do you even, is this, is Kaniax, right? You have like yes, an actual right. dedicated fan yeah. club. I mean, I need to hear more about that. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, man, um, when, when we came out, we were in a pandemic and uh, I didn't get to do a lot of press, you know, but I have to attribute the fact that I was on leverage, um, that I was on Angel. Uh, and I have a group of friends and family. Uh, some people call them fans. I don't. I call them friends and family and they call themselves the Caniacs. And they were there for me thick and thin. The show came out. They supported it. The, you know, a lot of it, you know, like, like let's, use, let's use Aldous Hodge, for example, who's Hawkman. I got to promote him. He's Hawkman in the new Black Adam movie coming out. DC, he's unbelievable in it. And, uh, and then Beth Reescraft and, and Gina Bellman, all these people that I'm on leverage with, they had a part to do in Almost Paradise because these fans came from leverage to, to follow me over to Almost Paradise. And, you know, that's, that, that to me was, the, was the, the most honorable gift I could get. You know, if I'd have done press and we'd have done well, that would have been expected, but we didn't. And they came over and made the show a success anyway. And now I'm so fortunate that Amazon uh, with imdb.com not only grabbed leverage and said, let's give this a go because you guys won a People's Choice Award after you were off the air. You know, we beat The Walking Dead. We beat everything else, won the People's Choice Award. They picked us back up and now they picked up Almost Paradise. And so this is the beauty of it is that the whole world gets to see it now. And we make this stuff for the world. We make it for everyone to see, you know, and, it, and it's a self, a sort of a, a, a really deep sense of pride when we get to show it to the UK, when we get to show it to Africa, you know, when the people in the Philippines get to see it. And so, uh, and so IMDb.com has allowed that, IMDb TV has allowed that to happen um, along with Amazon. And, uh, and, and, and I think one of the big reasons that they, they took note was because of my Caniacs. And I really feel proud about that. I think the reason why we won the Chiefest Choice Awards is because of my Caniacs. But their friends and their family, I've gotten to know a lot of them so, so much from playing music around the world and also uh, doing conventions and stuff like that. For 20 years we've been doing it. So, um, so these guys, I, I, I own my life. And I've said before, I mean, we really don't exist actors without them you know, without, without the people that support us and the people that watch us. And so everything I have, I have to attribute to, to, to the fans out there of Leverage and Almost Paradise and the librarians. And, you know, what do you hope uh, people will take away from watching it here in the UK and, you know, f further afield? 
I mean, I guess back when it released in the US and it was the pandemic, it had that role of being a bit of escapism and taking people elsewhere. But even now, you know, we're still all going through, you know, there's a lot going on in the world right now. Sometimes you just want to escape somewhere and be uplifted by something. It feels like shows like this are really great for that. This show is great for, for a release from the, from, from the real world. One of the reasons why Leverage is such a success is because the whole world was going through an economic really, really hardship at the time. People were taking advantage of people and uh, they were sitting back and they were getting hit in the face. And all of a sudden you come home and you turn on the TV and you see some people see exactly the situation they were in, depending on what week they were watching. And we're hitting people in the face. We're punching people in the face for you. And I think that's why Leverage will work so well in that situation. So bring in Almost Paradise. You know, right now with everything going on, especially the pandemic and stuff like that, mental health is a really, really thing that we need to talk about. We really need to talk about it. Uh, it's, it's important and it's serious. And if, if you think that it's not, then good for you. You know what I mean? You might have a problem yourself. You're just trying to cover up, but it's real. And I think that Almost Paradise kind of lets people in on that because this guy is going through a rough time. And, and depending on the situation on the show, um, you see, you see the emotions he's going through. You see the other characters going through emotions. And, uh, and I think that it, it helps it. So I think that it, the shows that I've done have been really, I've been fortunate because it almost says you're not alone. You know, somebody else out there has, has stuff going on like you. And I think Almost Paradise can help with that a lot. I think I'm almost out of time, but um, first of all, I believe it's already been greenlit for a second season. So maybe you can just give a peek, a peek of that. And also what other stuff you're working on because you're kind of this uh, multi-hyphenate, like you, you do music as well. So what other shows and what other, what other music have you got uh, coming out? Sure, sure. Uh, we're, we we're very fortunate. Like I said, I'm on, I'm on leverage right now, filming the, uh, the second season, if you want to call it that. It's actually season seven for us, but it's the, it's the second season on, uh, on Amazon, on uh, IMDb TV. And then we were so fortunate to find out a, a few months ago that, that they picked us up for a second season of Almost Paradise. And we're so happy. I, I got I went into the writer's room the other day, right before I left uh, Los Angeles and got to sit down with them. They were telling me, you know, they got too many stories. So they're trying to find the ones. And it's just amazing. And I, and I think it's actually going to be a better season. So I can't wait for people to see the first season so they can really gear up for the second season. Um, and other than that, man, I'm like I said, I'm doing I'm on leverage right now. Uh, and as soon as this is done, I will, I literally don't have a day. I can't go home. I'm going to cut my hair and I will, uh, and I will go back to playing Alex Walker in the Philippines, uh, which is a gift for me to be working all year like this. Um, and, uh, they're, they're, you know, I'm, I'm writing some, I'm writing some songs right now and in, in the, in, while I'm working. And so hopefully we're going to have a few songs coming out for, for some people that have been very supportive and very patient over the time and uh just i think i'm gonna get a valley i'm gonna do kane's kitchen again too which was a cooking show that i did on uh on itunes a while back and i think uh i think maybe dean will help me with that maybe put it on electric tv electric television and uh so my, my plate is full in such a good way man and in this day and age right now to be working i'm very fortunate the lord has blessed me and um and you know and again you mentioned it the kaniacs have been behind me the whole time and they're still with me um and so i i do this for them a little bit for me, uh, mostly for them. But the great thing is I've been going over to the UK for so long. It's ridiculous. 20 years I've been going. Angel conventions, leverage conventions, just conventions in general now because it's just pop culture. Um, and I've made so many friends over there. So many. So much of it is my family. I go once a year uh, and, I, and we always release it here. We talk about it and they don't get to see it. And so for them to finally get to see it, I couldn't be more proud. Uh, it's, on the, it's on the right format on IMDb TV. And, uh, and I can't wait for them to see it. And I just can't wait for my phone to start buzzing with people telling me what they think of the show now that they actually do get to see it in a place that I call my second home, which is the UK. Amazing. And I'm doing a scene with Gina Bellman right now that I just left. And she's like, oh, the UK, why am I not on it? And I was like, well, because it's almost paradise. And she was a little upset. She wanted to be a part of it. I thought she might pop in, but she's busy being oh. Gina Bellman. Who everybody knows over there. She's, yeah. So I appreciate it, Sarah, man. Thank you so much for this. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. And um, don't forget to take a rest at some point. <laughs> uh, you know what, man? I'll get enough sleep when I'm dead.
<laughs> I feel tired just uh, listening to you all the different things. Yeah, you're, well, different it's, it's sometimes just a facade, but right now it's not. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> all right. Well, it's been so fantastic to speak to you. And yeah, I can't wait for everyone else to be able to watch Almost Paradise here in the UK. So, and best of luck for the release here. Thanks so much.